she's done. Okay, well, this is it, right? Well, good evening, everyone. I uh, really had my doubts as to whether we would be here tonight with all of you. So uh, I'd like to thank all of you, each and every one, for being here. And, uh, of course, all Ryan supporters everywhere, absolutely amazing. We really do appreciate that. And so without further ado, let me introduce, which I know you know her name very well, Kathleen Zillner, who has a few comments she'd like to pass on. So, Kathleen. <laughs> So I'm not going to uh, talk too long. Today was just an incredible day because when we got to the prison, I know a lot of you were there, we had planned to take him out. And we went in and I had to hold a piece of paper up on the glass because he didn't know what had happened. He thought they were actually going to put him in the hole today. He thought something was wrong. And so I had to hold up a piece of paper that said it's over so he could see it, and then we were like trying to talk to each other through the glass. Then they brought him in a room, and we sat in there, and they, he had his clothes that Micah had gotten for him, and so they took him, they put his clothes on him, uh, he wasn't handcuffed, the guards were milling around, and then <coughs> unbelievably, the warden came in and said, we have another court order, you gotta take those clothes off, and put back on your orange jumpsuit. Horrible. Horrible. One of the worst experiences of my life, and I'm sure for him it was just awful. Then we chased him over half of the state back to Bingham <laughs> County. We had to get a judge's order. Um, and then when they pulled him into the Sally Court, uh, he again thought he was being rearrested. So here he is to. Uh, Tell you how thrilled he is to be free because it was amazing right to the end what a struggle this was. So <laughs> difficult from the beginning knowing that you're innocent and everyone you knew and talked to they're not talking to you and you don't know what they think or what they feel so the people who have been there uh, you guys know who you are there's, there's a handful so I uh, can't even really 
find them all, but you know who you are, and uh, I mean, I have so much respect for you guys. It's just, I mean, so much to me. I have a list of other things as well. I knew this would be a little bit too much for me. So, uh, no, definitely uh, also the supporters, everyone who's, you know, written me. Uh, you know, it's it's been amazing seeing the support, and I think it's been very, very helpful to my family. Uh, obviously, my, my you know, parents love it, and it's helped them keep going and helped me keep going. Also, you know, really, I would not be here today minus my family and Kathleen Zellner and Doug. I mean... and uh, you know talking with us and working with us and supporting us and putting in all that time and the effort and the money that they've done put in to help us it's I don't know it's phenomenal and uh, clearly without family and Kathleen's own associates we would not be here today and justice would not be done so uh, I appreciate that I can get back to living my life although I don't know yet how that'll feel <laughs> this is any indication it's kind of weird <laughs> and you know having gone through what I've gone through with our justice system uh, I was kind of scared about what was going to happen next uh, I didn't know this morning that I'd be standing here tonight I didn't know any anything I didn't know the next step at all and it's very scary very daunting so you know, I'm just, I'm very glad to be here, but I want to thank the Attorney General for looking at the facts of this case and making a decision based off those facts and doing the right thing. I think, uh, you know, it, it, it's very, I don't know, it's got to be crazy at that level, you know, and... Uh, it's a lot to look at, it's a lot to deal with, so certainly appreciate them. And also the judges who ruled on this. You know, I felt like this is really the first time we've been listened to by the justices, you know, and, and it feels incredible knowing that when we had our hearing, they were actually listening to the facts, they were talking about the facts, and it seemed as though they were going to actually rule on the facts, which to me has been different than what I've seen before. So uh, to Judge Martin, to Judge Witt and Ellis, um, you know, I want to thank them for taking their time and looking at everything and pulling out the facts of this case, the documented facts, and dealing only with those. And so to them, also, a round of applause, please. For that. To get arrested and to get charged for a crime you didn't commit, it's incredibly easy, and you can lose your life very fast. But to get out of prison, it takes an army, as you can see, and an incredible group of individuals, family, friends, uh, attorneys who are willing to sacrifice so much. And, you know, it's just amazing to be here knowing that other people are in my situation, don't have the support and the help that, uh, that I've had. So... You know, this is not an anomaly. I think we need to look at other cases and be aware that this is part of our justice system and, you know, there are more innocent people in prison. So keep your eyes open and uh, support them as well, for sure. So, other than that, pretty much all I've got to say. <laughs> Ryan, what's next? What is your first thing on your agenda? I guess that's just like what's next. Uh, 
I really don't know. I have I have no idea. You know, I I don't know that I was expecting just to get out and be able to do whatever I wanted. Uh, you know, I couldn't look too far into the future. So, like I said, I've been preparing uh, for my life from day one. I got arrested. You know, I've been reading and writing and studying and working out and been taking care of myself. So, I'm ready for anything really. And uh, it's whatever Fair my family. Columbia. What's that? Mayor of Columbia. Mayor of Columbia. Mayor of Columbia. Mayor of Columbia. <laughs> Next Next the general. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's in prison, there's threats being made on you, and there's a lot of wild stuff going on, things that, you know, you're implicated in, who knows. So, I thought I was getting locked up, I didn't, you know, jail for prison, it's kind of crazy. So, when I finally saw Kathleen, and I couldn't talk to her, I was just asking her, like, what's going on, you know, I was asking her if we got bail, and she just held this up, and uh, this is, this is how I knew it was going <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> now, uh, I've been so confused. The last couple hours, they were hard, you know, and uh, whenever I was, I was wearing these clothes and I was standing there with uh, Kathleen and Doug waiting to go and my family was out in the lobby waiting for me. They came in and said, you know, we need you to take your clothes off and put back on this orange jumpsuit and we're going to transport you to Columbia, to Boone County. And, uh, when you get transported, you know, you generally have on uh, shackles and everything. So it's not a good feeling, and you don't know what's going to happen next. And uh, it's incredibly scary. I, you know, I was incredibly stressed out, <laughs> to say the least. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen next with your life. And uh, and even when I got into Boone County, I didn't know if they are going to try to re-arrest me. Or, you know, it's not over till it's over. It's the same. It's not too How would you characterize your whole experience from start to finish right now. How do you <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know if I can characterize a decade, but uh, oppression is a good word for it. Um, it's a struggle, you know, I mean, pure and simple. It's a struggle, and it's been that way for my family and I, and uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm actually happier for my parents right now than I am for me because, you know, they're, I mean, they've had to deal with so much. What yeah. was the first thing you wanted to eat when you got out of prison? I don't know. I kind of want some Dairy Queen. <laughs> I think Dad can do that. Yeah. Definitely. I, I'm pretty sure he does that more than we know. <laughs> So we ended up telling him, so he was just coming to the visit with us, he didn't know. But they told him, then they started packing his things up, so he had these two big boxes. It's incredibly complex. Yeah. yeah. To determine exactly how it, how it all plays out, for sure. But he was, like he always is, braced under pressure. Um, this is so, he's so worth the effort of of what we did, what his parents did. He's just an amazing, amazing person. And even today, <laughs> he's, been, he's, just, he's such a remarkable, come up here. He was such a remarkable person. Even today, I mean, most people, even much older, you know, somebody much older would have just started crying and been upset and been angry. And he didn't. He was like, okay, that's what I'll do. I'll go back in the room. I'll put back on the orange jumpsuit. He's always like that. He's an incredible person. How do you so, do that? 
How do you do that? I mean, living in prison, you got to stay level-headed. Though. If you uh, if you have letdowns, if you know you let emotion take control, then you can be victimized very easily. So, you know, from day one, uh, my dad always told me, you know, he said uh, you got to be uh, stronger, faster, and smarter. So do everything you can to make yourself that way. And, and since then, I wrote a book about that. Actually, uh, for the most part, it's mostly done. But it's just about some of my journey, you know, it's not all about prison or anything, but I just wanted to see if I could write a book. And that's, you know, making yourself a better person so that you can survive and so that when I did get out, I would have opportunities. You know, I didn't want to look back and say I missed five, ten years, however long it took. It took longer than we thought. But uh, I didn't want to get out and still be a 19-year-old kid in my mind. So, you know, I've, uh, I've done everything I can with, with my, the help of my family and, you know, a little hard work, and, uh, and I think you know, I succeeded. Do you and your dad see yourself advocating on behalf of other men or women in your situation? Certainly, certainly, absolutely. Uh, there are so many individuals, I believe, who are you know, incarcerated wrongfully or have uh, just terrible sentences. <laughs> you know, it's disproportionate. There's a lot of minors in prison who have been in there over half their life. You know, there's a lot of issues, and... Uh, there's a lot of people who need help. Uh, number one, as I think Bill already pointed out, was uh, Charles Erickson. I mean, the guy's a lot of things, but the, the thing is, more so than anything else, is innocent. So uh, he does not belong in prison. At this point, what are your feelings towards him? I don't know. I don't really, I don't really get caught up in my feelings towards him. I know that he was used and manipulated and uh, I kind of feel sorry for the guy, and I know that he's been victimized. He's an innocent man in prison, so you know he needs help, he needs uh, support, and you know he doesn't belong in prison. I don't know anything beyond that, really, and I don't really have any comment beyond that. He's not a killer. He doesn't belong in prison. So. Right, there, like there. You've had so many people from around the world, not just in the state, but the country and the world. Oh my goodness. I mean, I really wish I knew what to say to those people because they are so incredible and they've helped my family not so much. I really wish I knew a way to give back to all of them because them being there and supporting us and doing everything they can, they designed the image on my father's car and the billboards and they've sent me so many letters and just so many incredible things that you know we've all appreciated so much that uh, you know I don't know, their, their help was invaluable, and I think that, really, I think being in prison for a crime you didn't commit, you start to lose trust in society and humanity, mm-hmm. and you see a lot of the negative sides of it, but through those people, I was able to see that there are a lot of incredible human beings out there, and that, you know, I, I really want to be <coughs> back into society with those good people, and, uh, and it makes me look forward to the future, because I know there's a lot of really amazing people out there. So it gave me hope in, in humanity, I guess, personally. Thank Ryan, you so much. Ryan, there is an unsolved murder out here now. Is there yes. anything you would want to say to Ken Heidholt's family kind of? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I can't imagine how they're feeling, but the one thing I would want for them is to be able to look at all the facts and to ask for justice because, you know, they've been lied to by the people they trust and to see them misled by people that they, you know, believe are trying to help them, I can't imagine anything worse than that, really. So, you know, I just hope that they're able to look at the facts, and I hope that everyone is able to ask that justice is done and that they find who actually committed this crime. And that's number one, really. Where are you waiting? Kelly,
I have no comment on that. <laughs> so we're either going to go to Dairy Queen or ring the bell in front of the courthouse, but we're out of here, okay? Thank you. <laughs>